Alright, good morning. It's day six of our road trip. And I have left the camp. Uh, family's all sleeping in. It's about, oh, 5.50 or 10 to 6 in the morning. Arizona time, that is. And I'm just walking down the road here, down to the Pariah River, go across there, and uh, should be trailhead for the Spencer Trail coming up up here. So let's go check it out. Right, we're crossing over the Pariah River. Here's the Pariah. I might have missed misjudged my timing. Might miss the sunrise before I get up there. Still got two miles of hiking to go before I hit the top. Looks like the sun's already gonna be up by the time I get there, but that's okay. We'll make something work with the pictures I want. Absolutely beautiful on the shores of the Colorado River here. Just pulled over at the boat launch site here at Lee's Ferry just to take in the view. A few more minutes and I'll be back, be up at the trailhead I want to be at. I'm at the trailhead now for Spencer Trail and the River Trail. I'm gonna go up the Spencer Trail now. Um, there's some cool ruins here from the early 1900s when uh, Lee's Ferry was operating. J. Hislop. Have to look that name up. Lee's Ferry interpretive sign. Lots of cool history down here. Uh, Spencer Boiler, 1910. Prickly pear. Beautiful time of year to be in the desert. Alright, I'm where the trail splits between the Spencer Trail and the River Trail. Time to go up. About to get narrow and exposed here. I still got a long way to go to get to the top. Well, I think I'm gonna throw in the towel on this one. It's a lot higher gain, 
than uh, I thought. I mean, I I know it was high and steep and a lot of switchbacks, but uh, I think it was a lot more than two miles, and um, I'm not as in shape as I should be to go at the pace I'd like to go, um, so I don't want to overdo it on the uh, on the heart rate and everything. Um, not that I have a history of problems with that, but uh, don't want any to start either. Also, uh, my knees, uh, in addition to my you know aerobic fitness, my knees probably aren't as fit as I'd like them to be yet. I, I do need to work on them more. And so I know from past experience, going back down trails like this, um, at least one of them can get pretty sore on me at times. I did not bring any trekking poles here to help ease the weight off, so I'm really gonna, um, hoping that my knees don't give me problems going down. Still got that short, scary little exposed section I need to get across, and uh, that always gets my heart pumping too on little sections like that, so Got to make that cross that again, but uh, kind of disappointed. Obviously, didn't make it up for any kind of sunrise. Uh, that that ship sailed a long time ago. I think I would have had to have woken up a couple hours earlier to even have a chance at that. And but uh, the view up here is awesome, nonetheless. I don't think it's going to change much between here and the top, at least on the side I'm on. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing what it looked like from the other side. That said, uh, we are going to be pulling over to uh, Horseshoe Bend, which is not far from the other side anyway, so I think the views across the horizon from there will be largely the same and maybe even a little bit better because of, you know, the Horseshoe Bend itself, of course. So I think I'm going to head down so I don't get back to camp too much lighter than I said I would and uh, bring the kids, bring the family back after pack up camp and I drive back up the road and show them the, the Lee's Ferry ruins down there. So I think it's time to go down now. But one last look at the view below here. You got the Pariah River that feeds, drains down right here and then feeds into the Colorado River here. Actually, check that. There's the Pariah River. It kind of curves out right there. You got parking down in here for uh, the Grand Canyon boat rafters. They uh, launch down here at this boat ramp and then they raft on down all the way down. The Grand Canyon, which sits down below this little uh, mesa top here, Grand Canyon just drops right down there. You can see the the gorge start to open up down through there. And then I think if you can see right beyond my finger there is the Navajo Bridge. Let's zoom in on that. There's the Navajo Bridge, and again, there's the uh, Colorado River Gorge. It just keeps going and going and going, and just ends up forming the Great Grand Canyon out there somewhere. Still kind of disappointed we didn't get time to drive in to look at it yesterday, but. We'll be back down through here a few more times. So, we'll definitely try and get that in next time we drive through. Have a look at the Pariah River draining in right there. And then here's 
think the ranger stations. Nope, that's the campground. There's our tent right in the middle of the screen there. There's a little orange or a Navajo orange red sandstone colored tent down there. And that is ours. So. Here's what's left of the Charles Spencer steamboat. Alright, well, made it down. All whole and well. That was one nerve wracking hike for a guy who has a fear of heights. That was a huge test against my fear. A uh, couple of spots, some pretty good exposure. Uh, probably more so than the Dead Horse Trail on the Highline, the Dead Horse Pass on the Highline Trail I did last year. and um, Definitely more so than the uh, little bypass in Spring Canyon of Capitol Reef National Park. Um, I don't know why the one spot, a couple spots on this one, one in particular really got to me though. And uh, I don't know, you'd think that after doing it, you'd feel more confident after doing it uh, successfully. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I. I don't know if I'd feel any better doing it again, but I'm sure I would if, if I had to. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be back down here to hike this again, or to try it again. I think there's actually a road up to the Spencer Flat up top there, back there behind me. And uh, you can get to it off from off the highway, so. I want to get a view from up there. Maybe I'll just drive up there uh, another time. But um, I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. Uh, so much else to see and do in the area on future trips through here and, um, and in other areas. <laughs> so many other areas to go see and explore things with. And uh, just, Definitely not enough time in life to see everything you want to see, you know? But, uh, yeah, just working my way back to campground now. So I was trying to get to the top of this up here, which is Spencer Flat, I believe it's called, because it's a Spencer Trail that zigzags all the way up there. And I don't even know, I may have probably got about two thirds of the way up right here somewhere and just bagged it and came back down. Okay, here I am on the banks of the Pariah River. It's almost tempting to keep going up the Pariah and on, a, on out up through Buckskin Gulch and up to Wire, Wire Pass. And that's all on my bucket list to uh, do a multi-day hike down through those canyons, Wire Pass, Buckskin Gulch and down the Pariah out to Lee's Ferry in the Colorado River here. And uh, I guess that'll remain on my bucket list, but uh, at least I can say I've walked the Praia River here, in a manner of speaking. So, all right, so I just make a quick little run up to uh, the entrance to the Lonely Dell Ranch area here. This is the area you come out at when hiking down through uh, the Buckskin Gulch and doing the Buckskin Gulch to Pariah River trek. 
and it's quite a fascinating historical area here between uh, the ranch and the Lees Ferry site. Some old Mormon pioneer history. So this looks about day hiking but uh, no permit required but if you uh, want to backpack through here there's limited permits available for each day for those who want to backpack through from the top down so basically the the route out from the Praia River you finish on down here out to the road and then pick up your car down in the 14-day uh, parking area for that's also used by all the rafters that do the floats down the Colorado through the Grand Canyon and all that so it's kind of exciting you know again this hike is hike from the buckskin and the Praia through the Praia is definitely on my bucket list and here I am doing the final little stretch of it so oh it makes me excited to do it hopefully I can uh, fit in a trip work something out for next next year either next spring or next fall but uh, all right time to put this camera away and run back to camp get ready to Walk into the campground now. Going down that road. Taking a little shortcut here anyways, but I really should have driven to the trailhead instead of taking the road, walking the road. That really added another mile to the hike and given the elevation gain of that hike, I really think had I made it to the top and back, it would have been in the neighborhood of an eight mile round trip. So, um, yeah, so pretty, pretty grueling. Definitely bit off more than I could chew. If I had more time to give it, I would have gone all the way up, but got family to get back to and a lot of other things on our agenda today on our way back. And gotta get back to Tori to stay the night with Jess's parents' house and pick up our dog there. And so, another full day ahead of us and getting excited to get back home to see our dog. So, right, so back at the camp, everyone's awake and having some breakfast. Did everybody sleep good? Did you sleep good, Lennox? Or Ever uh -huh. Everett, what about you? Mm. We. He said they're good. Yeah. Everett, what are these? Panda. Say panda. All right, so here we are at the, have a look around at our, from our campsite here. Here's where I tried to hike up to this morning. Only made it up to around that area somewhere, I think. And then, Come back down. Here's the Colorado River out there. It kind of runs down below the campground here and disappears down into the gorge as it heads down for the Grand Canyon down that way. Here's Vermilion Cliffs that we're up, camped up under. Here's our tent and our campsite, of course, our vehicle. And back around all the way, 360. So Lee's Ferry is out under the cliffs over there. You got Pariah River that comes out behind that water tower. Comes out uh, around the Lonely Dell Ranch out there. All hidden back down on the other side of the hill over there. It's time to clean up and get packed up. 
first we'll show off our sleeping arrangements how we do it with such a big family so I sleep on the end over here we got a queen mattress right there Everett our youngest sleeps in between us with Jessica on the other side and then our other four kids fit with a queen mattress turned sideways and because the kids aren't too tall yet they all managed to fit down the length of the pad the other mattress there and it works out pretty good so that's our messy tent everyone laying down there it goes That's okay. Okay, hey, everyone's touching the Colorado River. The biggest river in the West. So we just got the family back out to the Lee's Ferry Fort ruins here. Yep, that's the Colorado River down there. So after a few brief stops at the uh, Lee Ferry Fort, Lee's Ferry Fort, and the Marble Canyon Navajo Bridge, we are at the uh, parking lot of, for the uh, Horseshoe Bend Overlook. And holy cow, is it busy today. Uh, we've never been here. I've uh, driven past it once or twice without uh, thinking to pull over to check it out. No drones allowed. I like that sign. And as you can see, it is crazy full today. This lot is the same size as this lot, and it's full of cars. I know this is a popular place given all the pictures of it that show up in my Instagram feed, but wow, it is quite the hot spot today. I say there's a lot of people here. It's quite a parade down there. I 
and I thought we were and I thought we were done with the zoo on Tuesday. Horseshoe Bend. Just So, I'm just walking over the bridge here at uh, Glen Canyon Dam, just uh, having a look down at it. Again, uh, I've driven over this bridge, but haven't yet pulled out to have a look down at the dam itself, so it's pretty big, pretty deep, pretty far down. Not quite as far down as Lake Mead, though, at the Hoover Dam. But anyways, kids stayed back in the van watching a movie. We just had lunch in Page after our stop at Horseshoe Bend and now we're making our way back to Tory. Um, I did have another hike on our agenda to pull over off the highway here as we get further up into Escalante National Monument. There's a little trail up to a place called the Toadstools I wanted to go check out with the kids, but uh, we're all kind of tired and all kind of beat up here. The kids are anxious to get back uh, to the grandparents' house in Tory and anxious to get back to see our dog. I'm sure our dog Sophie's anxious for us to get there too. So, uh, this is all close enough that you can make it down here in a day and camp or stay somewhere. So, it's all anything from here on out is easy enough to come down and do uh, another day, another time. So, we will get on the road and head back to Tory. Still got a few hours to drive yet. So. And we're in Utah. Back to the home state. Oh, just past the Toadstools Trailhead. That would have been the last hike for today. But, like I said before, it'll be there another day. Alright. Well, making another stop, just past through Kanab. And uh, now we're up at the Smoky Cave stop along the side of the road. Something I've uh, wanted to check out uh, next time we're down here. So here we are, gonna. See what the they have flowers. inside here. You are supposed to be these the flowers, see? Hmm? But they died. What kind of dinosaur is that, Lennox? Mm. Who knows what it is? Mm. Who knows what kind of dinosaur it is? Starts with an S. I don't know. Yeah. Back in the car here. Um, knew it was a museum inside, but didn't know I'd have to pay admission right up front. So we'll come back some other time when we have more time and uh, maybe take a day trip down here on a visit to Tori. And Back on the road we go. I thought you were a monster, but I'm 